Good morning, this is Jeff with Sewer Tech Northwest. Today we're at property address 855 Northwest 8th Street here in Gresham. We're located at the rear of the home here, right next to the exterior access door. We have a the three inch clean out with the four inch line. We're gonna check the overall condition and serviceability of the sanitary sewer line. We're gonna use the garden hose to run water. It's just a much easier way to control the water flow than doing it from inside. And mimics it just perfectly. So anyway, it transitions here immediately upon access over to four inch concrete pipe. And I can't remember if I said already, we're checking the overall condition and serviceability of the sanitary sewer line. We're zeroed out right there at the base of the cleanout. Now we're going to take another look at this on the way out. This actually might be ABS plastic right here. I think immediately it sort, sort of has a similar color as concrete. I'm not getting all the aggregate rock like normal though, so we're going to we'll take another look at that on the way out. We're definitely in concrete pipe here though. And everything appears to be four inch in diameter thus far. Now it looks like this line's probably going to round its way around the right side of the house and then head out to the street. At least that's kind of how it looks here immediately. And we're going to keep it moving fairly quickly here to get through all the twists and turns. so far is a, is a fair amount of aggregate rock that's showing through in the flow line area. Over time, the mortar wears out between the aggregate rock and you get the exposed rock in the concrete. But we'll see how that looks once it's drained out. We'll have a better look on the way out of here. I'm hitting a lot of debris here. popped out right there. We may have a belly in the line. We might just have a ton of debris build up. Hopefully when the line's drained out we have a better look there. into something right here and we're so far out I don't have enough um, to get over the top of whatever this is. I'll give it one last shot here and see if we keep moving or not. Yeah, that looks like it's going to be our stopping point there. We're almost 100 feet out right now. 
if we were 20, 30 feet out, we'd probably have enough leverage to pop over whatever this is, but we don't, unfortunately, at this point. Now we're stopping here at 97 feet. I'm going to go locate, see where we're at here. All right, we're currently located underneath the driveway. We're probably about, oh, 10 to 15 feet away from the what looks like a secondary clean-out at the very front of the driveway. Right now, we're probably roughly 15 to 20 feet short of the actual of the street, though. Now, I have put marking down on the ground here. Um, we've got a fair amount of standing water. I, unfortunately, we can't get beyond this point. Um, if there might be a blockage up ahead or something like that that's causing the standing water, um, given how this property is arranged here, it's more than likely a belly in the line. Even with enough fall, typically after doing about 15,000 sewer scopes, any house that's set down below the, the street level on a slope like this, uh, almost 100% of them will end up with some type of belly, even if there's technically enough depth to grade the pipe. It's a very, very common thing. So anyway, we do have a belly there that leads up to that spot there at 97 feet where we stopped at with over an inch of standing water. I think we've got the line kind of goes in and out of standing water. Well, we're about 10 feet, 6 inches to around 11 feet there. I'm having a hard time locating it properly just due to the depth and the standing water around the, the camera. We still have a little bit of water draining through here. It's a slight trickle. It's not enough to really make a huge difference. I'm looking at the line here anyway. We're back up to an inch of standing water here. And back out of it. kind of slow here for a minute just to make sure we're we do have some water still flowing through this right here is is draining properly though that water's not standing there to an inch of standing water here. I think this is the part of the line here where we have some really thick debris build up in the pipe. I'm going to push out here a little bit. I'm going to do some very small markings. Because right now the way this is looking here with the amount of bellies in the line or starting to aim towards a repair. I'm going to put a couple markings down the ground real quick. All right, put a marking down here. The line's starting to kind of cross from one side of the driveway to the other right now. We're seven feet deep there. I don't know if we have something that's slowly leaking inside the house. We've had the water turned off for a long time. There's still a slight bit of water trickling through. Now once we get to right here, we're into an inch of standing water, and the line kind of goes in and out of bellies constantly. Some of them are like a quarter to a half inch of water, uh, but we've got some pretty significant ones that are over an inch of standing water. And where I typically start to see toilet paper collect is once you've got at least a five foot section of pipe with at least an inch of standing water static with no water running. We've definitely got that here. This is, this is the most significant part of the line here with the issues. But when you start getting issues throughout the pipe, especially a line of this age, if it, you know this were updated pipe, spot repairs start to make sense. Um, but when you've got a line this old, a full line replacement ends up being more cost effective because you're not spot repairing a line that's going to, the rest of it's going to need updating in not too long. And I'm pushing back out here for just a second, get a marking on this. I believe it was right around 60 feet where this particular belly starts to drain out. All right. 
Alrighty, we are just rounding the uh, corner here at the at the rear right corner of the house. That's if you're looking at the house from the street. And then we are at six feet deep here. It seems like this line makes quite the uh, interesting route here because from the clean out to where we're at there is only probably 15 feet away from here. So I think it makes kind of a roundabout way of getting out. Anyway, that, that spot there is sitting closer to It's hard to gauge it exactly because the amount of stand, or the amount of debris that's in the line, too. We've got somewhere around two inches of standing water in that particular section there. And you can see by the amount of debris that's collecting, it's, it's a significant issue. It's causing a lot of buildup in the line. Yeah, we have a Y connection right here in the line. This may be where the ADU connects into the to the pipe. That might be the reason why this pipe routes it the way it does. Okay, we're about three feet eight inches deep here. We're gonna see how the rest of this pipe drains out from this point. Most of the issues in the line were at that point and beyond, but again, when you're at this age of line, you can see the amount of aggregate, aggregate rock that's starting to show through here. This is one of those that obviously it costs more, but the age of the line really it makes more sense to do a full update rather than to spot repair it. Leave that up to you guys to decide that, but it's it's just showing that much age here. We've got joints that are separated out like that. That joint right there is very likely letting water escape the line. You can see there's a hole developing there if you look up the joint. And I wish we could see beyond 97 feet. Unfortunately, we can't. More than likely, the issues persist past that point. And we're almost back to the clean out here. I'm going to do another marking in between that. I did mark the Y connection. It looks like we have two Y connections. We just went through another one there, which at this age of house, would be, wouldn't surprise me if that was a storm drain connection, that first Y there. We just went past a second ago. And I'm trying to be conservative with my markings here, just so I'm not painting the heck. Most of this is under concrete, um, so I'm trying to make it a little easier to wash it off if you have to. But I'm putting the depth markings on the ground adjacent to the, to the actual locate marking. So I'm putting less on the concrete, makes it a little easier to get that paint off of there. Anyway, another Y right here. This one, actually, you know what? This might just be a, a diameter change here. I immediately kind of look like a Y. That is uh, expanding out there. It looks like six inch pipe. We are in six inch concrete here at about 11 feet. So not a Y connection. Apologize for that. Anyway, you can see the aggregate rock here in the pipe. You look at the bottom of the pipe versus the top, it's getting pretty rough. It's not that it won't still function, it's just getting to that point where I mentioned before, this line is at an age where spot repairing it really is not a cost-effective way of going about things, especially with as many issues there are throughout the line. Generally, to fix bellies like that, you have to correct more than just the bellied pipe to get graded properly. Um, and with the amount of bellies throughout the line, most of them start once you get past uh, about 28 feet or 29 feet where, the, where that Y connection is at. But I would recommend a full update from the cast iron transition we're sitting right here at. I'm going to put a, a T marking right here from this point all the way out to at least 97 feet. Uh, more, you know, it, at this point, it makes sense to take it all the way to the street edge or wherever homeowner responsibility breaks at. And that's due to multiple bellies throughout the line that are over an inch of standing water, one of which is very significant. We've got closer to probably two to three inches in that first major belly there with all the debris buildup. That one, with, coupled with the aggregate rock, we've got two or three joints that were visible here that look like they're opened up to the ground. But because of all those issues, I recommend a full replacement here. All right, we are one feet three inches deep here, just about four feet away from the clean out. I do have a T marking written down on the ground. 
I've got that mapped all the way out to 97 feet. I did markings about every, oh, 15 to 20 feet there. Now the cast iron pipe, the short little bit that's there, is still in good condition. You can just leave that in the ground if you want to and go from the transition all the way out. Our first markings right here comes out the back, rounds around the right side of the house, goes up the driveway, and we made it to the top of the driveway where the, the, the slope stops and it starts to kind of flatten out. Now what we're going to try and do here, I think we've got a secondary paint out up at the curb. Let's see if we can get, we can't get that thing open there and just go up the rest of the line. Okay, I just tried to go open up. There's a secondary clean out right up against the street edge. It looks like a portion of the line has been redone as far as I can tell. There's a new patch of concrete right at the front of the, the driveway with a new clean out there. Unfortunately, it's bolted shut with a tool that I do not have. I think I've got one at home. It's very, very uncommon to need a, a full-on socket set to open up a sewer line. Uh, so, and I, unfortunately, I'm not opening, I'm not able to open that. Again, we stopped about 15, 20 feet short of that point. Um, you can check records. It looks like that line has been updated from the street edge out. And I believe the city of Gresham does actually accept responsibility uh, at the right-of-way of the line. So, if that's the case, either way, it, it, I'm still recommending a full update out to that point. It's just nice if we can see the rest of the line. So we're going to try and go through the ADU here now and scope that portion of the pipe. We're now located inside the garage of the ADU. This is also original cast iron pipe in here as well. And straight across the way there is where we started at. We just ran some water upstairs. This runs, you know, likely be really short. We're just keeping it drained out right now. We just flushed the toilet upstairs. Or I'm sorry, ran the kitchen sink. And now we're in concrete pipe here. We do have a fair amount of rust scale on the pipe. That that stuff right there is a problem. We need to get that jetted out of the line. That will cause a blockage very, very easily. It's very rough and heavy stuff there and it snags toilet paper and everything up very easily. So here too we have a lot of aggregate rocks showing through in the floor line. You can see how much of those pebbles are showing half to three quarters of the rock is exposed there. You got a tie-in coming through the top. I'm pretty sure we're going to run into a Y connection here in just a moment. actually been where the two lines hook together. I'm assuming that they do hook together. I'm going to go locate and see where we're at. We just turn the water on inside the house, so you should see that running here in just a second. Here is not looking super hot. There's a bunch of 
Oh, we've got debris here. There's also some. Okay, so here's our water tying in. I'll pull back here. You see, we how we don't have water flowing yet in our portion. We just met up with the light connection for the other, for the main house. And we're going to give it just a moment here to drain. See if we can get some water out there. Okay, locate a camera and I put some markings down on the ground. It's right before the, the two pipes meet together. And we've had the kitchen sink running upstairs now for oh three or four minutes probably, if not five minutes. And I'm not getting anything in the way of water flow coming past the camera here. I'm going to try and pull back and find that water flow. camera's coming out wet, so it looks like we're in water somewhere. Okay, so here's, we're starting to get into some water here. I'm going to pull back, make sure this stuff looks like it's even moving. So it is flowing, but you can see how all of a sudden it, it disappears at that point out there. Okay, we've got flowing water here at 16 feet. I'm going to shove back out here. And you can see how it was pretty much just the camera that got that water to go over. Once we get into this point here, all the water running through this house, at least from the sink, is dissipating out through um, gaps in the pipe or through the aggregate rock. And this is a very similar situation as we have with the main house. When you get this much aggregate rock showing, water can actually start seeping out of the pipe through the spaces between the rocks, through the separated joints, all that stuff. We had a garden hose running at the house next door, a lot higher volume of water, which will to a certain extent overwhelm some of those spots, but we're, we're going to be seeing the same issues with both houses. So anyway, I recommend a full update to this line as well. This one, I mean, there's almost no water flow getting anywhere. You can, I mean, we should have had water out to that that. Y connection there where the houses meet together five minutes ago. It's just not getting there. It's all escaping out through the pipe. Now right, we're three feet eight inches deeper. We're right next to the stairs to go up to the ADU. We're three feet eight inches deep there. Again, we got back here where there's water, but it just it's its pretty much all escaping the line. What will happen is the water will escape to a certain extent. It will overwhelm, it will saturate the ground, and then you'll slowly but surely get little bits getting out further. But for the most part, it's pretty much all escaping there. We ran water for, in total, more than five minutes, probably eight minutes at, at full bore, and pretty much all of it escaped the line. Now, this line, too, is making kind of a roundabout way. If you were to draw a line from this clean out to where that tie-in is, it's only about 20 feet. It's making a pretty roundabout way. The line heads to the back of the ADU and then exits out the rear left corner of the house. I'm going to put a marking right here. We've got a lot of scale buildup in the pipe that also needs to be jetted out of the line. All right, the line exits out right within the uh, the walkway of that of the side door down at the bottom of the ADU that comes into the garage, not the one that goes up to the unit upstairs, but where the garage entrance is at. The line comes out right there. So I've got a T marking right in front of the front door. I would get the cast iron jetted out here. I mean, there's enough of this pipe that needs to be replaced. You could make the argument for just abandoning it altogether and making this much more or at least less convoluted if, you, if it can be done and run it straight out of the front here. This may have been set up originally for a septic system. That might be why it's going the way it is. But ideally, just go right out the front of the unit here and you can, you're, you're going to be using probably 60% less pipe to do it if you can do it with grade. That's what I don't know. 
So all the cast iron pipe there appears to be in good shape. We do have some scale buildup, which I'd recommend cleaning out of there. Uh, but if it turns out that it's gonna, you can run it out the front of the house, you might as well just abandon the cast iron and, and redo it. There's enough of this line that needs to be redone um, that it would, it would make sense to do that. But the cast iron there is still working. It just needs to be jetted. Uh, but I recommend a full replacement of the line from for the ADU from about 16 feet where the transition is at from cast iron all the way out to about, I didn't believe it was like 65 feet or 70 feet where the two lines meet together. Uh, but both, both lines showing significant aggregate rock showing through bellies. This, this line's especially nasty because pretty much all the water that's running down it is escaping the pipe. None of it even made it to the Y connection. Stopped, the furthest it made it out to was about 30 feet out of about 65, 70 feet. I would highly recommend a rescope after the repairs are done. Make sure it all looks good. This is one you really want to get a rescope. It's a very tricky setup here on the property because we sit so far below grade. So make sure you get it rescoped. Uh, but full line replacement um, from both the cast iron transitions from both the ADU and the main house all the way out to the street edge or the edge, end of homeowner responsibility.